no, 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 no. Hey, what's going on? YST here. Welcome back to another Raid Shadow Legends video. And today we're going to be going over arguably one of the worst legendaries in Raid, Tilo Gourmet. But is she really that bad? Let's get right into it. Alright, so Tilo Gourmet doesn't get enough love, or any love, or will she ever get love? I'm not too sure. She's been on the buff list for so long, and hopefully in this upcoming rebalance, we see Tila's name up on there. Because aesthetically she looks really cool, but today we're not going to completely bash this champion. We're going to go over the pros and cons of her, what we could do to kind of change her in the future, and what kind of uses she may have for you on your account, even at a rank 50. And if you do ever want to take her to a 60, this video can hopefully show you what she is capable of. So, reviews. But this definitely isn't the best place to look when judging which champions to build. Um, magic Keep, I would totally agree with that because the three places in the game where I do believe she does shine is the Magic Keep because she can steal that shield on her A1 which is really good and also in the Orcs faction was really really solid champion at a rank 50 without this champion I couldn't beat it because she applies that leech she applies continuous heal and then she also steals all of the buffs that the boss puts on herself um, on top of that she could be a campaign farmer and would you use it in the arena? probably not and also dungeon progression. I'm not talking about endgame, I'm talking about people that might have only have one champion on their account. Maybe just a ninja and a Tila Gourmet and they're thinking what kind of support champion can I have? So let's get right into a kit. So on the A1, attacks one enemy and steals one random buff from the target. The thing that I would do to change this skill if she was to ever get buffed is steal two random buffs but cannot be resisted. So you won't need accuracy to do this. I think that will make her really viable when coming up against tanky champions or unkillable buffs for example. And then heading into the A2 she attacks one enemy and places the HP burn debuff for 2 turns and places a 15% continuous heal buff on all allies for 2 turns if this attack is critical. It's a really solid ability, it's based off HP, it doesn't smack extremely hard but it's okay. The one thing that I would do to kind of change this skill is AoE. If you made this an AoE HP burn champion with a continuous heal, I know you would use her. I know, yes you, the one watching this video, you would use her if this was an AoE HP burn. Um, heading into the A3, we do have an AoE here, so attacks all enemies, has an 85% chance, 100% once booked, of placing a leech debuff and a 100% heal reduction debuff for 2 turns. This is not the worst ability in the game, but Actually, I wouldn't change anything about this. Leech and heal reduction does have its uses in this game. Yeah, I'll keep the A3 how it is, but the A2 I'd change it to an AoE, and then on the A1 I'd make it non-resistant and steal two random buffs. Then she would be viable, right? You could potentially say, yes, you're a legendary champion. Um, aura, maybe push this up to a 70. Increase ally resist in all battles by 70. Yeah, so 70 here. This is okay, AoE here, and then still two random buffs is what I would like to see. Um, artifacts wise, um, I've gone for a high crit rate, high crit damage, and a high accuracy build. But it's not to say that this is the only way to build her. This is just what I'm showcasing her in. So we just got a crit damage set, we got perception, we got a speed set. And then over here we got accuracy and speed, crit damage, and then we got defense here. Overall stats, we've got a 57,000 HP, 3,000 defense. 82% crit rate. Go on then, take them it guys. It's not 100%. I could potentially get it 200% but... Oh well, this is how I use it on a day to day basis so why not show it how I use it. Um, 214 speed and a 300 accuracy. And the mastery that I'm rocking on this champion is going down to Warmaster. Because the main places that I feel for her is the magic keep and the dragon. When it comes to the dungeons, also the ice golem. She's really good there because she applies that leech, um, she applies the burns, the continuous heals, and she is the right affinity for Ice Golem 20. So if you don't have any other good options, she can come and clutch there for you. We're going to cover that today. And support tree, just trying to make full use of Master Hexer and Sniper and all that stuff. So let's just take her for a spin in a few areas of the game, see what she can get up to. Let's get right into it. Okay, so we're going to take her into 12-3 Brutal. Most champions in the game can do 12-3 Brutal. 
your KO can do 12 free brutal, okay? But we're just gonna showcase it anyway, see her skills and stuff. So we're gonna take it down to a one speed. All right, so over here, this is what the A1 looks like. Pretty much a one shot there with the continuous heal. That's what makes her a pretty good champion. If that was an AOE HP burn, it will be a lot of use in this game, if, in my personal opinion, especially in like spider comps and stuff. Um, just the AOE. Applies that leech and stuff, but she did get a weak hit there. Let's just click this on auto and see how fast she can do it. Continuous heals again. She does it pretty well. This is an unbooked champion, by the way. I did not get any cooldowns or any extra damage, so it can kind of replicate what it would look like at a rank 50 as well. The only reason I took her up to a 60 was for CVC points, if I'm honest, but I do use her in certain teams. Mainly in my account, it's just the Magic Keep and the Faction Wars. That's where I use her on my account anyway. Um, she does it in around 20 seconds usually, but it was a 50 seconds because we just showcased the skills. And let's head into an Ice Golem run. Okay, so we've just thrown her into this Ice Golem 20 team, not 25, and she does pretty well if I'm honest. She does the AoEs, getting down the waves a bit quicker, she's got the heal reduction, she's got the leech, she's got the HP burn, the continuous heals. Overall, really solid support champion if you take away that legendary status. Yeah, like if you had her as an epic champion, would you use her? I potentially would, the kit isn't terrible. It just needs a buff. Please Polarium, Grohawk the Bloodied, Tila Gourmet, sort them out, please. They need it. Pretty much holding up okay, of course this is the right affinity for her, and she's applying that continuous heal on everyone. So if you had a less tanky team than this, she's gonna be pulling out a little bit and hopefully clutch you through to the end. HP burn is also good to have on a champion, and she pairs really well with Magna, because he extends her HP burn, which means you can keep it on, on Ice Golem just for a little bit longer. And there's the final damage. We've got her at 2 minutes 51 seconds with this team here. Not the most OP team in the world, but of course I wanted to showcase her more than other champions. She hit a 1 million damage. In comparison to a Vizix who's doing AoEs and she's also really built for damage. That's not bad whatsoever for damage output. Okay, so now we are in the Magic Keep, the one place where I said she's really good. So hopefully we can showcase that right here. We're at the boss right now and watch this. Steal that shield and look at her shield. That's insane, right? Like, if you're really struggling and progressing on this boss and you have a rank 50 in your vault, potentially take her out for the magic key. You're going to want to farm your potions, especially with the buff to the potions when we're getting bigger drops. She also applies the HP burn and the heals, like I've said before. But stealing that shield is vital. And to have it on an A1 skill so you don't have to wait for any cooldowns, it works out really good. So let's just forward this to the end of the run. So yeah, look, even if you look at her heals right here, 220,000. That is pretty substantial, especially when pairing with a Ugo, who does an AoE heal. So you can kind of see the kind of value she can bring to your team with that leech and that continuous heal. So let's head into the next area. Okay, so stage 21 on the Faction Wars Crips. This video was pretty hard to build, guys, because I had to wait for the Magic Keep to come out. I had to wait for the Orcs Keep to come out. So hopefully you guys appreciate that. But on this Crypt right here, she's OP. I'm going to put it out there. You can hate me if you want to. I'm not overselling her. She actually is really good because the amount of sustain she brings for your team, especially if you don't have any other healers, is substantial. And she was the only reason when I was first beating this boss that I could freestar it. Because I'm only going in here with attack based champions. I didn't have Sanash Survivor at the time, or she was a rank 50. And I still managed to do it. Even Iron Brago, I had I think an uh, uncommon champion or a rare champion there. And she pretty much did all of it by herself at a rank 50. She applies a lot of continuous heals and stuff, so let's just forward to the boss. So what's really cool, like if you see right here, you see all those buffs that's gone up on the boss right here. Watch over A1. She can take them off one by one, making sure that the boss doesn't heal from stealing your buffs. And I think that's a really cool mechanic. I paired with a Grohug the Bloodied, who's also really looked down upon. He can steal that turn meter, and between him and her, they pull out wonders. So you can see here again, steal the buff on the A1. Will Grohug go through with a... Still turn meter? I can't remember. Nope, he's applying that decreased speed. We've got the HP burn and the continuous heal because it was a 100% crit rate there. Oh, she got a critical hit. Sorry, my bad. She's at 87% crit rate. And there's that turn meter reduction. Reduction. What's wrong with me today? 
Yeah, so Grog the Bloodied and Tila Gormain, really solid champions for the Orcs faction wars. Okay, so if you're against the arena and you're just trying to do some AoE damage or apply some heal reduction or some leech, or potentially take off a Skull Crown's unkillable. That's what I want to kind of showcase here right now. So let's try it. So let's just do what they're doing. Strip that. And okay, let's take this off auto now. Hopefully Tilo Gwemi doesn't get smacked. No, they haven't got enough firepower for that. All right, so we don't want to strip it with Arbiter. Oh, it's gone because they took a turn. Oh dear. That didn't go really well, did it? But what I wanted to show is she could steal the buff with the A1. That's kind of what I wanted to show there. But he didn't give me a chance. Let's just finish this off on auto. But yeah, in those kind of scenarios when you're trying to steal one random buff, especially against Swift Perry and unkillable champions like Skull Crown, she can come in clutch for your team. Are we going to get another AOE off here? So you can see, see there that she just stole the buff. Okay, we've got the continuous heals because she did a crit rate there. Come on, AoE. Finish off in style. No Arbiter. There we go. We got a weak hit on that Ascartosis there. Come on. Still in another random buff. And we got there in the end. We didn't manage to showcase it there, but hopefully we can do it with another team. Let's see. Let's do some refreshes. All right, so I just tried this team here and I failed again. I couldn't get that skull crown to not take a turn. Uh, we might have to do some drop turn meter manipulation. Shall we try this one here? Can we just get a single skull crown team so I can show it, guys? Come on. Um, no more skull crowns. Well, I guess you guys get the drift anyway. Let's just do one more read of battle and see if we can showcase that heal reduction. So, maybe this team here? Let's try on this one. So we're gonna strip them there. So now they've got the heal reduction on. So Arbiter, when she tries to boost, which we're gonna see right now. Watch. Nobody got a heal apart from Deacon Armstrong because he took that extra turn, which is okay. If you're trying to stop some healing in the teams, it could work out potentially well for you. She's gonna come through again to do it again. Oh no, Jumbo. Oh my god. This is a tight battle. There we go. Leech again. So even if we get an AoE right now, our champions could potentially fill up to full if Razen wants to give us a chance. There we go. Arbiter got some heals right there. Come on. AoE HP burn. Or single target HP burn. I'm thinking about the buff that Polarium needs to do. Oh my god. What is going on? Can somebody get an AoE in here, please? Let's just forward it to the end. Okay, so I've kind of come up to the decision not to use her as your nuka. She's got a high amount of crit rate. She's got a high amount of crit damage. She's got a high enough HP, which is what her damage is scaled off. And she's had a lot of AoEs here, and she's struggling. She's definitely struggling. Maybe in the right setup and stuff, but I definitely wouldn't waste my time trying to use her as a nuka. Yeah, that's my final decision there. So, Arena... Possibly a no-go, just some niche kind of uses. Um, I'd only use it in the Magic Keep, Faction Wars, Campaign Farmer if you really want to, and just an overall support champion in some areas of the game like the Ice Golem. So that is going to be all for the video. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like and subscribe button. What would you like to see Tilo Gorman be changed on her kit? Would you agree with what I said? And if you do have her maxed out, where do you use her? Take care everyone. Peace.